I'm Alan Robarge, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. I like to talk about attachment injuries and healing attachment trauma. And this video is part of a series, a brainstorming approach to think about healing work. And I'm even framing it as healing work that works. And at the core of that, the approach that I value and that I teach is self-directed healing. You're in the driver's seat. This is about you. It's about your wisdom self, your intuitive self, your healer self, and really identifying when you're in charge of your own healing work, which means you're maturing and your growth, when you're on board and make a commitment, when you're ready to mature and grow and change, you have to assess where you've been, where you're at, and where you're going. And this takes place in chapters. This takes place in stages. And you have to begin to look at where are you at in this process and what you need, what's the resources that you have, and what's on the horizon, what resource do you need. This video is about being unlovable, a belief, you're unlovable, you're unlovable. And no matter what you do, you've had this ongoing chronic core belief that comes with a feeling, and oftentimes that feeling is shame, there's something fundamentally wrong with you, therefore you're unlovable. And relationships just don't work out. You're unlovable. And at some point, after you go into the feeling and you get a little bit of sophisticated maneuverability, you get a little bit of spaciousness to start to work with uh, the feeling so it's not as painful, torturous, or overwhelming and you can begin to distance yourself a little bit. It's, it's like acknowledging, you know, hey, unlovable, hey, unlovable feeling, I know you're there. I'm not taking you seriously as, well, as I once did. Still painful, still, you know, kicks, kicks me in the ass, still confuses me. But you know what, I'm, I'm not as in the dark about this reoccurring old belief, but sometimes we really go into it and believe it. And if we do this enough, over time, we cross a line, we internalize it, we, we go into this very blurry space of confusion where it's no longer just a feeling state of shame, where there's something fundamentally wrong and flawed with who I am as a human being and I feel shame for being me because I'm unlovable. It's no longer a belief and a feeling, it gets internalized as a sense of self. Now I am unlovable. It's no longer this is the feeling that I'm experiencing. This is the belief that reinforces the feeling. I am the feeling. I am the belief. I am unlovable. It is me. It is you. So when you're on your, doing your healing work and you are looking at your stages of transformation, you're going through different grief processes, there's going to be a point in which you are confronted with the limitation of moving through the world from this internalized place of your woundedness. If you believe you're unlovable and it came out of some history of being hurt and the result is feeling wounded, and then you've over-identified with the wound where now this is who you are, there is a limitation with showing up in the world like that. And chances are you are collecting more evidence to re continually tell the story of your world view in such a way that it reinforces, yep, you, yep, see, there it is again, you're unlovable. So at some point you're going to go through a grieving process and that point might be now this might be something on the horizon that you uh, that i'm planting the seed to know that this is going to happen but you are going to say unlovable self we have been together a long time and i used to think you were the only self that existed but i'm realizing i cannot continue to orient to the world to see the world through the lens of being unlovable because it disconnects me from myself. Unlovable self was created from a wound and in order to do something with it and to manage, you made it an identity. And it kept you company. It helped you make sense of what had happened. 
it helped ultimately in some kind of twisted, weird way, protect you from being hurt again so that you try to avoid, you know, being unlovable. But when it is time, if we think of healing work, we think of uh, going through these stages of transformation as walking through our suffering. And, you know, the, the, the suffering is the path. And when we're on the path of maturing and personal growth, we uh, encounter the river of suffering. We need to get to the other side. We build a raft out of our own suffering. It's our own innate knowledge, the intimacy, the vulnerability. And this is the part about healing work that oftentimes people get a little hung up around how incredibly selfish it is. It's, it's wildly self-absorbed to be so intimately connected to you, your awareness of your own woundedness. But we need that incredible focus and that awareness to build the raft uh, out of our suffering that's going to take us across the river of suffering. And at some point, when you get to the other side, you need to say goodbye to the raft. You don't drag it around with you as you go hiking. And what's on the other side? On the other side is possibility, spaciousness, freedom, joy, playfulness, creativity, sense of adventure, letting in new relationships, learning some new skills, laughter. The levity of laughter is on the other side. But in order to access it, we cannot experience it through the gateway, through the lens, through the barrier of our not good enough self. And in fact, it's the not good enough self going through the river of suffering that's going to get us to the other side and then we leave the raft of our suffering at the shore which is itself a process is a goodbye process more ritual more mourning more grief and you enter that place saying goodbye to who you once were this content thinking about healing work uh, as a self-directed healing process is the foundational component of the membership community improve your relationships that I have created bringing like-minded people together who are committed to realizing this is not something that just changes overnight and this is an ongoing process and there are chapters and there are new resources and new discoveries and new insights and it's all about having courage there's a profound bravery and courage to sit and look in, to, to be mirrored and reflected back by your own life suffering and to not get confused or hooked into thinking that's who you are. That's uh, giving you a reflection back of your own experience of humanity. It is impersonal. Just because you feel or you notice that you are unlovable and you feel the shame of that doesn't mean that you are. And that's the disidentification that we're talking about here. The reason why we leave the raft at the shore, the reason why we say goodbye to this part of ourself that we believe is unlovable is to open to the possibility that there is something more and different and better. And there's people who've come together to talk about this in the community, improve your relationships. And it's an eight week program. Uh, every week has a different topic to explore. Uh, it's a reoccurring program. It recycles every eight weeks. You can jump in and join at any time. There are suggested activities to explore. There are also resources, handouts, worksheets. There are 180 videos that you can uh, use uh, to shore up your understanding and to, and then come together. It's a community of supportive, like-minded people, uh, kind, very kind members who want to have these conversations and who want to keep themselves accountable because if you don't, the alternative is to get sucked back into, to get stuck, to stay looping in a place of you're an unlovable person. And that's not an option. You know, it's just not an option to die in that place. We need to wake up to participating process, enter a process of self-directed healing. If you want to join us, please do. If you want to learn more about the program, go to alanrobarge.com forward slash community. We would love to have you. 
Thank you for watching this video. More videos just like this to come, uh, exploring this, you know, similar themes of healing work that works.